We naturally expect the Gospels to portray Jesus as the one in the story who displays wisdom, compassion, and godly virtues, one who will expose deceit and self-interest. We have an idealized portrait of Jesus that has been passed down to us through our religious traditions. But the Jesus we meet in today's gospel is not the Jesus we usually meet. Honestly, Jesus does not come off looking so good in this encounter with the Canaanite woman. His actions and his words seem decidedly unchristlike. Today, we meet the human side of Jesus. Matthew takes the story presented in chapter 7 of Mark's gospel and makes some changes to it that tend to heighten the drama. Mark calls her a Gentile of Syrophoenician origin, but Matthew changes the ethnic origin to that of a Canaanite. To Matthew's Jewish audience, she would have been a reviled figure, buried under generations of deep prejudices. From the days of Noah, Canaanites were considered cursed. The Hebrew scripture has many warnings about the sinfulness and godlessness of the Canaanites, and the Jews were instructed to stay away from them when they entered the land that they had been promised. The label Matthew gives this woman evokes historical conflicts and thus defines her in terms of an age-old prejudice a first-century Jewish audience would understand. This Canaanite woman represents what might be called the dangerous other in Jewish society. In this story, Matthew has Jesus identified with his own people over and against the them this woman represented. Well, given this history, it is surprising that this woman approached Jesus at all. But she had a great need. Her concern for her daughter was so deep that she dared cross the rift between Jews and Canaanites. No doubt she had heard of Jesus, of his ministry and his miracles, a man who ate with sinners, who brought into his circle the outcast, who even allowed women to be his followers. So she decided to make an appeal. For it was at this point where she had nothing to lose and perhaps everything to gain. And here is where the story becomes difficult for us to hear based upon our view of Jesus and the gospel message of inclusiveness. Her petition, Kiri eleison, Greek for Lord have mercy, is more than just nice song lyrics from the 1985 song by Mr. Mister. It is the cry of one seeking justice. Jesus, acknowledge me for who I am and treat me like you've treated other marginalized people. In Matthew's account of the story, her petition is met with silence. Jesus does not say a word. Jesus ignores this woman and the disciples are likewise unsympathetic, asking that Jesus send her away. Finally, Jesus speaks to her but responds by saying, in effect, that her needs are not any concern of his. Jesus claims to have a clear goal on where he, he, he is to direct his attention and his energies. And the woman is not in that vision, for she is a Canaanite. But she has Jesus in conversation now, and she will not let the opportunity pass by, so she asks again for help. And when she persists, Jesus insults her with a derogatory term that displays these ancient hostilities. He likens this woman, her daughter, her kind, to dogs begging for scraps from the table. It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. We do not like the reference in this passage to people as dogs. It offends our sensibilities and our understandings of the inclusiveness of the gospel. Now, attempts are made to modify these words to make them less harsh by appealing to the word dog as a household puppy, but the term is still one of contempt. No matter how one wants to revise it since, Jesus is speaking as a Jew spoke of a Canaanite. They were dogs, and there's no way to change that offensive use of the word. Jesus, in his human nature has been taught certain things about those other people. 
and he's reflecting what he has been taught, and he sounds just like any other Jewish male of his time and culture. This past Sunday morning, I presented a paper at the American Society of Church History, their conference, on the mimetic modeling of theological discourse by the Native American church in order to preserve their freedom to use peyote as part of their religious practice. Catchy title, right? <laughs> I use this term mimesis, has a classical pedigree, originally a Greek word. It's been used since Plato and Aristotle to refer to the attempt to imitate or reproduce reality. The mimetic modeling of discourse from others with little critical thought and engagement occurs with great frequency in our society. You know, following a sermon on lifestyle evangelism, one family thought that they had to do something to better witness to Jesus. So they invited their neighbors to dinner the following Friday night, and when it came to the meal, the hostess was keen to show her neighbors that they upheld Christian standards in their home. So she asked little Johnny to say grace, and little Johnny was a bit shy. Well, I don't know what to say. Well, darling, said Mom, just say what Daddy said at breakfast this morning. And obediently... The boy repre repeated, Oh God, we've got those awful people coming to dinner tonight. It's one, it's one thing to have contempt for someone behind his or her back, and it's another thing to hear the ugliness of our thoughts and feelings expressed aloud to a real human being. And yet we hear those same type of sentiments expressed today by Christians. Contempt for other human beings still rears its ugly head in today's world. People just use different words or maybe the same words to convey the feelings. The great thing about this Canaanite woman is that she seems unfazed by everything working against her. She is persistent in the face of insults and rejection for her daughter's sake. You're a dog, implies Jesus, and she quips back, well, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. She is challenging Jesus to practice what he preaches just as we should be challenged. We know the gospel narrative is about Jesus and look to him for the meaning of the story. And it's tempting to justify Jesus' unseemly behavior by explaining away that Jesus was merely testing the woman or testing the disciples. But as Marilyn Salmon writes, if we can resist the temptation to save Jesus and us from embarrassment, we might discover some new insights in the gospel story of Jesus as Matthew tells it. Here we see a very human Jesus, one who seems to be having a YouTube moment. And perhaps the story disturbs us because we also see ourselves mirrored in Jesus' attitude toward the Canaanite woman, but not our best selves. We know very well the tendency to define and fear the other based on skin color, nationality, class, creed, gender, sexual orientation, these deeply ingrained stereotypes that go back generations or even centuries. We're used to hearing about what Jesus taught, but we seldom hear about what he learned. And today's story provides us with an opportunity to see Jesus' theology evolving as he was growing into an understanding of his purpose. In this moment of brutal honesty with the Canaanite woman, there was transformation. Jesus changed, grew, and it took courage even for Jesus to overcome cultural prejudice and missional limits in order to hear and answer the Canaanite woman's plea. David Tracy suggests that we meet the possibilities we have never dared of dream of when we allow God to speak to us through strangers, just as Jesus encountered with this Canaanite woman. Jesus got to see the world through her eyes and not from his vantage point as a privileged male on the inside. His understanding of mission became enlarged. He saw in a new light understanding of unbiased grace. What Jesus learned 
was that the outsiders he encountered were not outside the activity of God, the heart of God, the care of God. The outsider was and is not beyond the salvific action of God. We see in Jesus the very best of human potential in relationships with others, even those we avoid and fear. And we see in Jesus the possibility of perceiving common humanity where we once could only see difference. And when we encounter the other as one who shares our humanity, we can never see them as other again. In this Canaanite woman, we also find ourselves. For we, the church, we are the dogs. This is a woman who understood the power of God's grace, a woman who believed so much she knew that a crumb from Jesus would suffice. This woman signaled the way to the future as Gentiles flooded into the church and the dogs of the earth were transformed also into the people of God. In this story, Jesus has opened the door to the Gentiles, to all people. There is no privilege in the kingdom of God. The privilege which exists in the world is invented by us. And Jesus gives up his privilege. He ceases to exclude. He now loves as God loves. So the story asks us whether or not we are teachable, whether or not we are able to learn from the other, and whether or not we will extend ourselves for the sake of someone in need when our own prejudices may be leading us to turn away. Unfortunately, our society and the church today are still stuck in discussions over whether it is right to give the children's food to the dogs. There are so many ways that we continue to offer crumbs or less to other children of God. As we try to live into the kingdom of God in this place and at this time, we struggle with the same questions before Matthew and his community when the gospel was written. Who is entitled to mercy? There are many strong voices in our city, country, and world today that are saying that there are some who are not entitled to mercy. Who gets medical care? Who gets mental health assistance? Who gets a job? Who gets a place to live or something to eat? Who gets to come into the United States? When you get out of prison, who really gets a chance to start a new life? These are not questions of issues. These are questions of real people with real lives, people with names. And in our story today, Jesus does have the last word. Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. Not Canaanite woman, but simply woman. She will never again be defined by national, racial, or religious prejudice. She is now a mother like any other mother who desperately seeks help for her child. And for this mother's sake, Jesus heals her daughter. And perhaps Jesus heals us too from the temptation to hang on to old stereotypes and habits that prevent us from embracing our common humanity. Jesus was changed in that encounter. He chose to listen to someone whom others would have ignored. He chose to change his mind when doing so would cost him honor in the sight of others. He chose to offer an example that people and attitudes can change when they encounter others who are different. So this story offers us hope for humanity when people truly follow Jesus' example of God's mission in the world. The Canaanite woman models the most admirable human behavior. She shows willingness to be vulnerable by seeking help from a long-standing foe who she knows despises her because of her national, racial, and gender divisions. She is persistent in the face of insults and rejection. She didn't go away. She won't be dismissed. It is she who changed Jesus' mind. She was persistent with her resistance. And like her, we too must be persistent in our challenges to injustice in a world that affects those who don't have a privileged voice to be heard. This morning we hear a story that offends us on so many levels. It's not just a dogmatic Jesus we see, 
but our own dogmatic, uncompassionate, and exclusive tendencies that come into view. But we are gathered together in this place as a community united in the spirit of one who managed to put his own prejudices aside, one who discovered a wider vision, one who came to believe in and teach and even give his life for a more inclusive love. Lord, have mercy. May we prove to be as teachable as he was. Amen.